Hello, today's tutorial is on the Sadie Tote, designed by me, Gina Iqbal, for Knitting Fever. This tote comes in two sizes, a small and a large. The small is approximately 9 by 13 inches, and the large is approximately 13 by 18 inches. Today we're going to be making the small tote, which uses four skeins of the rumples in the main body color, and one skein of the contrasting color, along with a Leica crochet hook, size P16 or 11.5 millimeter. You'll also be needing a stitch marker for this project. Rumples is made by Euro Yarns, and also there's a counterpart, Flounce, which is made by Knitting Fever. The difference between the two is that Rumples is more matte, whereas Flounce has a little bit of a sheen to it. The yardage is the same, and the makeup is the same. So first I'm gonna take my Rumples. I like to pull from the center of the ball. I just find it to be easier, so that way it's not rolling all over the table. And I'm gonna start with my slip knot. Insert my hook. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chain seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There we have it, our first chain seven. Round one is going to be worked in the outer loops of this original chain that you've created. So you're going to be working in these outer loops, then you're going to hook around the side and work in these outer loops. So it's, the project is going to go around this base. I like to start with the stitch marker at the beginning of the round so that way I don't have to worry about remembering to move it at the end. I also like to mark it on the hook versus after I've made the first stitch. It's essentially the same thing. So first thing you're going to do is single crochet in the second chain from the hook in the outer loop. Two single crochets in this spot. One and two. Now you're going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four in those loops. One, two, three, and four. That's the body. Here's your first end, and now we're creating the second end. We're going to do two single crochets in the outer loop. So, you just move this a little bit and you can clearly see. Here's the outer loop, here's the middle, and here's the other outer loop. So we're gonna start in this one, two there. One and two. And now we're going to flip this around and work in the other outer loop. Make sure that you have that middle piece in between. So we're gonna work in this loop now. Two in there. Let's go get myself some space there. One. And two. And now we're going to do four single crochets down the row. One. Two. Three. And four. See how they line up nice here? And now we're going to do two single crochets in the last loop. One 
and two. And there you have it. You're finished with round one. All right, ready for round two. First thing I'm going to do is move my stitch marker. I like a nice big lobster claw, so that way I have plenty of room and I don't end up snagging any of the yarn. And we're going to do two single crochets in the next two stitches, in each of the next two stitches. One and two then two in the next stitch. So you're just increasing around the, the side here, not in the base. And then you're going to do your four singles down the base. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to do two single crochets in each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Oh, got a little tangle in my yarn here. There we go. Then I'm going to do my four along the base. One, two, three, and four. And then finish it up with two single crochets in each of the next two stitches. have round two. All right, for round three, we're going to start by moving the stitch marker. And we're going to do two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the stitch after that. One and two, and then my single. Then we're going to repeat that one more time. One, two, and my single. So that's starting the edge. Now I'm gonna go down my base, my four single crochets. That's gonna be a constant. One, two, three, and four. Then I'm gonna repeat that pattern. I'm going to do two single crochets in here, then one single crochet. So it's increasing every other stitch for four sections here. One, two, and single. Increase. My single. Now I've gotten to a little tie in the yarn which is very normal because this yarn doesn't go on forever. It is uh, manufactured so that it has this kind of nice netting effect. So what I'm gonna do is just pull out a stitch or two so that way I have plenty of space where I can weave in that end so I don't have that knot to deal with. I'll get 
get to that guy later. So just going back on my pattern, we have the, two, the increase and a single. So I need to increase here. Leaving my tail on the inside so that I can weave it in later. And my single. My increase. Single. And one more. Increase. And then single. Now I'm going to do a four down my base. One, two, three, four. And then back to my increasing pattern there of two singles in one stitch and then a single in the next, second time. And my last stitch. All right, and that is round three. So you can see we have this nice base here and then we're increasing around the sides to make this grow this way instead of completely everywhere because we have a nice oval shaped base for this tote. Now for round four, we're going to flip that increase pattern a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is move our stitch marker, of course. Now instead of increasing right away, we're going to do two single crochets and then increase in the third stitch. One, two, and then my increase, my two stitches in one. I'm gonna do that a second time. And my increase. Now I'm going to do the four stitches, which is the middle of my base. One, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna start the increase pattern again. We're going to do single, single, increase, or two single crochets in that one spot. We're gonna do that four times. Single, single, increase, again, single, single, increase, That's two. Single. Single. Increase. That's three and one more. Single. Single. Increase. Now we're going to do our next four single crochets along the base. One, two, three, four. And now we're going to do that increase pattern again two more times. So single, single, two and one, single, single, two and one. And one more 
more time. Great, and that is the end of round four. So you got a nice sturdy base right there. I really love when the colors pull together. It gives it a little bit more texture. How fun. Now if you were going to make the large size, you would need to do one more round before you start the walls or the sides of your bag. Here we have an example of the large tote. You can see it's quite big here. And this is what this base looks like. It has that one more row, that fifth row around. And the way you do that one, the increase pattern, is you single crochet three and then your increase stitch the four times around the side. And there's a longer base in that too. I believe it's eight stitches instead of the four that we're doing for the small size. All right, so on to round five of the small bag, or six of the large bag, is where we're gonna start to curve the edge so that we can build the sides of this tote. First things first, we're going to move that stitch marker. I like a nice dangly one, so that way I can definitely see it. Sometimes if the stitch marker is so small and your yarn is thicker, it might get a little bit lost in there and you have to go digging for it. All right, so round five for the small bag, you're going to crochet in the outer loops and this is gonna cause an edge effect. Instead of just going flat around, it's gonna start to curve the work. So you're just gonna single crochet all around in the outside loop. That's going to be a total of 40 stitches. All right, keep on going and I'll see you there in a minute. All right, so here I am with the last couple of stitches. Remember, we're gonna keep crocheting in those outer loops only. my last stitch and you can see that this kind of creates a little ridge around here you can see the ridge all the way around and your work is already starting to bend on its own you can see that this ridge this ridge is really starting to puff out a little bit and if you were to lay it flat and smooth it out you can see it's making a nice sturdy base now if you opted to hold the fishing line along with the project, this is going to be nice and sturdy for you. Great for if you wanted to use it at the market or if you wanted to carry a couple of heavy books, that way it won't stretch out over time. Now for the next 10 rounds, you're going to just single crochet around this perimeter, regular style, not in any kind of fancy loops or anything, just regular single crochet all the way up until you get to the 10th round. Make sure you move your stitch marker up at the beginning of every round so you don't lose count and you don't lose your place. It's very important for the placement of the handle later on. See you in a little bit. All right, we are back at the end of round 10. You can see I'm on my last stitch here. This bag is really taking shape and it holds its own pretty well. And I did this one without the fishing line, but if you have that, it would really tighten this up even more, keep it nice and sturdy. But I kind of like it the way it is. Now you can see I have a little bit of yarn left on my third skein, so I still have one full multi skein and one solid skein. And now for rounds 11 and 12, time to change to this new solid skein. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this extra inside the bag. Hold on to that for later. I'm gonna grab my next skein, pull from the middle, that's my favorite. 
I'm gonna leave a lot here to weave in later. So that way I don't have to worry. First things first, I'm gonna move up that stitch marker. I'm going to single crochet into the next spot, yarn over with the new yarn, and then I like to just tie these together for now, so that way I'm holding them in place, and later on when I go to weave in all of my ends, I'm going to untie all of my knots and then weave them in nicely. All right, so for rounds 11 and 12, we're just gonna go around single crochets again. Remember that each round here has a total of 40 stitches. If you were to be doing the large sized bag, then you would have made a couple more rounds in here to increase the body size, and then you would still switch to the contrasting color and do a couple of rounds in that contrasting color. So I will see you at the end of round 12. Keep on going, we're almost there. So here we are at the end of round 12. You can see that the last two rows are in this contrasting color. And what's super fun about the yarns that we've picked out and the colorways is that they really complement each other. In this particular case, the color is exactly the same. So I think it really flows nicely with the rest of the work. All right, now to start row 13, we're going to be starting to form the base of these handles. First things first, we're going to move our stitch marker. So we're gonna single crochet in the first 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now if you hold your work straight here, you can kind of see that we've landed at the first third of this bag. So we have the first third, then we're gonna create the handle and then come around for the second, for the last third. We're going to chain 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now you're going to be very careful that you don't twist the stitches as you skip seven single crochets and then start single crocheting around again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I'm gonna single crochet in that eighth stitch. I'm just gonna give myself a quick check here to make sure that I didn't twist. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to single crochet in the next 13 stitches around. This was my first one of the 13. So we already did one, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Now, if you hold the work again flat, you can kind of see that you've lined up with where the other handle is. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna chain 15, we're gonna skip seven single crochets, and then we're gonna do the last three single crochets because it's going to be 
13 stitches on either side of the handle. So here we have 15 chains. Another tip is you want to make sure when you're doing these chains that they're not super tight because we're going to single crochet in them along the next round. And if they're really tight, then you're really going to be fighting with the work. Nobody wants that. So now we're skipping seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to single crochet in the last three. One, two, and three. Now round 14 is super easy. You're just going to be single crocheting all the way around, making sure that you single crochet in each of the 15 chains on each handle. First things first, we're going to move up that stitch marker. And single crochet all the way around. That is going to be a total of 56 single crochets all the way around. All right, have fun. I'll see you in a few. Now, as we start round 15, we're going to change over to the base color that we've been using. That's our multi in this case. As you can see, I took just enough yarn left over. Maybe you can make a cute little project of a little wallet or something with the leftovers. And I'm going to start my new skein for this next row. I do have some left over from the base before, but it's not enough to make it all the way around. And I wouldn't want to have a join in the last row of the project. It's just more to weave in, plus there's more knots or bumps that you'll be seeing. So I'm going to be taking the new skein and adding that guy in. I like to make a little knot like I mentioned before that I'm going to be taking out later when I weave everything in. But this is a good placeholder for the moment. Here I am moving up my stitch marker always at the beginning of each round. And here we are in round 15, just single crochet all the way around and that's a total of 56 single crochets. This really is a fun project that you can do maybe over a long weekend. I really enjoy whipping up these bags and especially because so many laws have changed in different areas where you have to bring your grocery bags, you can't buy plastic anymore. This is a great alternative. You can also use it as a beach bag or even as a knitting bag. Have fun with it. Another great idea is if you wanted to line this bag, then you can definitely make it a purse for your everyday use. That would also be super fun. Now it's time to weave it all in and enjoy.